It's genuinely rare when you get a more perfect example of legacy media or the divide in the community between critics and consumers, I'll say, uh, than just, I don't know, this week. We've seen Dave Chappelle's Sticks and Stones universally loved by uh, fans, a comedy special that uh, pulled no punches, so to speak, and uh, was um, a little spicy, we'll say, and, and that's how I like my comedy. The modern day com comedy is milk toast, so worried about offending anyone. Honestly, they're worried about things that they said 15 years ago that may have offended someone. Look at Kevin Hart, although I do wish him a speedy recovery from his recent wreck. You know, that guy said a word 10 years ago and it cost him hosting the Oscars. This is ridiculous. We need to push back against this culture of cancellation. This idea that no one is redeemable. That's probably the worst part about it. Almost anyone will tell you that people can change. Uh, they don't often, but they can. And the idea that... I'm supposed to make apologies for things that happened 15 years ago in a different time in a different place is absurd. The idea that somebody can do a bad thing, so therefore they're forever a bad person, is also absurd. There are very few people out there, even those that I critique, that I don't think could turn it around. I mean, I think there are, there are people that I used to vehemently oppose online now that I've got to understand them or, or they've become more amenable. Maybe I have too, but you know, things happen. Nobody is beyond redemption. Everyone loves a good redemption story. I'm still pulling for you, Boogie, to finally find that redemption arc. But uh, over the past few weeks, uh, we've been talking about Dave Chappelle's Sticks and Stones. And I think that when you put it up next to another film, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So as it stands right now, Dave Chappelle's Six and Stones and 16,000 ratings on Rotten Tomatoes has a 99% positive review score. It currently has a 33%. That means one of nine gave it a positive score. Oh, actually, I'm sorry, three of nine. Um, so one thing that I thought is curious, and maybe this is something that I don't understand with Rotten Tomatoes, is... Why did only nine critics review them, review the show? I mean, it's been out for a long time. I wonder if there are critics that are self-selecting out as, as some form of protest where they're like, I'm not going to give this uh, any mind. I don't know. But you look at all these bad negative reviews, lacking empathy can certainly be amusing, but Sticks and Stones is a tired routine by a man who forgot to layer jokes into his act too often sound like a pundit on Fox News. Yeah, like you didn't out yourself here. You know, I know a lot of people when they're reviewing comedies uh, who talk about Fox News, I mean, or CNN, for example. I mean, why not, I guess, just let your bias be known. Six and Stones is designed to gen generate inflammatory coverage. It's symbiotic cycle with no end in sight. It's a uh, we hit that one. It isn't necessarily a failure. It just feels like Chappelle presenting half form material. Yeah, okay. This one mostly misses the mark. And what is that mark? The truth. Chappelle remains one of the most vital and certainly among most daring of stand-ups. His latest hour is a setback. Sticks and Stones is terrible. And Dave Chappelle can only blame himself for that. Come on. Who is that? These people don't even have avatars. Jeremy Yans is finally in here. Well, I couldn't help but appreciate the fact that, well, this guy will do it. He'll go there. I mean, it is nice to see some of these people come through with positive reviews. But the only top critic that you have is this person, Inku Kang from Slate, who is upset that it's racially insensitive and that it's disappointing. I, I don't know how you get to be a top critic. On, on Rotten Tomatoes, but apparently you have to be a complete moron devoid of understanding nuance or comedy in any way. Uh, you know, the, the, the 
user review score, however, is 99%. And just to layer in a little bit of what bias looks like, okay? And we've seen many great examples of this uh, over the years. And um, I think Rotten Tomatoes has made some good steps to cleaning up user reviews. Because honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, Chappelle isn't getting flooded with positive user reviews here. But still, 99%, it's hard to argue with that. You know, that that basically means that, you know, 16,000 out of 16,089 reviews were positive. Uh, it seems like if people were truly offended by this or didn't think it was funny, there'd be a few more, you know. Uh, but let's look at another movie uh, uh, that describes itself as this. Let's see if you can see where I'm going here. A young bartender in the Bronx, a coal miner's daughter in West Virginia, a grieving mother in Nevada, and a registered nurse in Missouri build a movement of candidates to challenge powerful incumbents in Congress. One of the races will become the most shocking political upset in recent American history, starring Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. That's right. A movie about the squad for the biggest lull cows in in any government ever uh in at least in modern day uh has a 100 percent with 83 critics 100 <laughs> percent of people who reviewed this film thought it was good a hundred percent you mean to tell me not one critic thought this film was bad are you joking let's look at the uh audience score Womp womp, 25%. Again, comedian, you know, paid those in the know give Dave Chappelle a 33%. Those who care gave it a 99%. Those in the know give it 100% certified fresh. And its audience gave it a 25 I don't even understand how anyone can look at this website and not laugh. I mean, here's the thing. First and foremost, Rotten Tomatoes is a site designed to sell advertising to Hollywood. It is a site designed to sell you tickets through their Fandango app and take three bucks per transaction. Okay, they are in the business of making money off one place, one place alone, and that is Hollywood. All right. So who do you think they have to appease? Who do you think number two works for? I mean, uh, sorry. I mean, I'm not I'm not like layering out these crazy theories. Just think of it from a business perspective. All right. When I go to Rotten Tomatoes website, what do I see ads for? Hollywood movies. Hollywood. In the end, Lears finds the hope that she is looking for. As the primary results are in, Knocked Down the House becomes the electoral equivalent of the Death Star raid Star Wars. Watch this, and you're watching a revolution. One that will make a lot of viewers stand up and cheer. <laughs> I mean, come on. Could you guys slob this knob anymore? Even though we know the outcome, the campaign process remains enthralling. Most because it's fascinating snapshot of modern politics in flux. And a hopeful, ultimately moving account of idealism in action. This is a woman that is worried about the farts of cows. Okay? This is a woman who... I'm not, I'm not even going down that road. I'm not going down that road. This isn't about that. This isn't about it, uh, whether or not you agree with her politics. This is about... <laughs> these, these four women are making the Democratic Party look ridiculous, by the way. Sorry if you like them. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Maybe it's not their fault, but when you have photo ops where you're pretending to look at people in camps and then the other angle shows it's an empty parking lot, I, I, I just will never take you seriously. Now... <laughs> do every most politicians probably do that? Yeah, probably. I'll give you that. But not all of them get caught. A look at risking everything to make a difference. What did you risk? You were a waitress and now you have a huge salary and 
giant gobs of corporate money. You risked being a minimum wage person to be one of the top 1% in America. These women are not risking anything. They're cashing in. All right, let's be honest. Just like all politicians, by the way, not just them. All right, sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, 100% Rotten Tomatoes, 100%. Audience gives a 25. Chappelle, 33%. Now, maybe there are, I mean, no, I don't even have to say maybe. Of course, there are th there will be people that don't like these shows. Of course, there will be super fans that like them, right? I think that gives most films like a, a shot at a 50%, right? There will be super fans of AOC and the rest of the squad that will just be literally, I mean, like there probably were people literally in tears, by the way, don't worship politicians. They're, they don't work for you. They work for themselves. Um, there were there will be people. And then there will be people that rated this badly just because they don't like them. Okay, of course. But where are all the people that re reviewed Chappelle badly because they didn't like it? I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, I, I just think that reviews are long past the point of any relevance. They're bought... They are an arm to sell tickets for Rotten Tomatoes. And I just thought, what a great example of, you know, how Rotten Tomatoes essentially is a joke. Everything about the site is a joke. And it should be avoided at best, or at worst, and at best continually mocked for its complete out-of-touch takes. By the way, let's see. It too, 72%. Ooh, I'm nervous. I'm actually very excited to see this film. I heard there are some, but you know, here's the thing. 118 people reviewed it already. Why did only nine people review Chappelle's very popular Netflix show? Ask yourself that. Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> Could you be any more obvious? And by the way, shame on those, shame on those movie reviewers. You guys get that. People trust you and that people are looking for your opinion on a movie, but you're there more worried about pushing your agenda. What a joke. I sincerely hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, before you leave, make sure you leave a like and drop a comment on it. It's the only way to help the channel grow in today's YouTube environment. Above, you'll find a link to subscribe and make sure you turn your notifications on. Or if you just want to check out another video, there's one of those up there too.